Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming May of 2017 premiere auction. Today we have a revolver that is mechanically really interesting, although I don't know a whole lot about its development. What I do know is it was designed by a guy named Alexandre Fenu. It's a Belgian design, proofed in Belgium, um, and Fenu operated out of Liège. Not surprising, the big Belgian gun-making center. Um, for a while, his company was basically just him, Fenu at sea, and for a while he did also run a partnership with Clement, uh, Fenu at Clement. And uh, Clement is relatively well known for the 5mm Clement cartridge and a lot of firearms development in Belgium in the latter part of the 1800s. Now this particular gun was developed in the 1870s. Um, as far as I can tell, the, most, the latest patent that applies to it is 1876. And based on the proof marks, it would have been manufactured, in fact, actually based on proof marks of other models, because virtually all the proof marks on this one are pretty worn away. Um, but based on some other models, other examples of this model, this would have been manufactured between like 1876 and 1893 in that time frame. It is a breech-loading revolver, so it's a cartridge gun, but it's almost certainly a black powder cartridge gun. And the, the company, Fenu, was around for quite some time. Um, he's, he made well, made a wide variety of guns, made uh, pinfire revolvers, made British bulldog style revolvers. When World War I fired up, uh, he, among with many other Belgian companies, made uh, officers revolvers for the French military. So he made kind of a copy of the French 1873 revolver that you could buy as a French officer. And then there's this. Uh, this is 450 caliber, and what's really cool about it is the way that you reload it. I call this gun yoga fail. That is how you open and unload the Fanyu revolver. Let me do that a little slower. So what we have is a lever that forms the back half of the trigger guard, and it pivots out to one side, and that's what unlocks the action. Worth noting, when you unlock it, it actually cams the firing pin back, or cams the whole hammer back. That ensures that you don't accidentally set off a cartridge when you close this thing on a fresh loaded cylinder, because there is no half-cock notch. I can show you that here. Now it's possible that there was a half-cock notch originally and that it has completely worn away uh, without taking a closer look at the internals, and these screws are a little buggered up. Uh, without doing that, I don't know about that detail for sure, but it does cam open safely like that when you unlock it. The next step then is to pull back on the front part of the trigger guard, which is going to unlatch this, allow it to pivot around this pin on the top strap, and then this trigger-like sort of handle here that was the front of the trigger guard acts as a lever on the spring-loaded ejector. So you kick all six cartridge cases out simultaneously by pushing that. Then you can reload the, the cylinder, snap it back together, lock that lever back in place, and you're ready to fire. It's a double action gun, so fire double action, and also fire single action. Has a remarkably nice trigger to it, actually. One of the notable, just kind of unusual uh, aesthetic choices here is that the sight rib ends about a quarter inch, or about five millimeters, shy of the muzzle. And that's, it, it looks kind of like that one was just hacked off by somebody on this example, but it's not. That's actually standard. And on all the production versions of this gun, you'll find the sight rib ends right there. Calling it a sight rib is a little bit of um, an exaggeration. There's not really much to the sights here. You can see the front sight there, just barely down in that channel, and a very narrow rear sight. Let's bring that into focus. Um, yeah, this is not much to go on for sights on this guy. Kind of interesting to note that this does have a lanyard ring on the grip. That's indicative of it being a military pattern of pistol. Um, the grip itself is a military style as well. Whether this was intended for military use or not is kind of hard to say. This revolver itself was not adopted by any military force, but at the time when these were being made, 
uh, officers would often be responsible for purchasing their own handguns. Um, Fun Yu had a pretty good reputation for quality, as far as I can tell. So it's possible that this was marketed for officer private purchase. Um, it would be easier to tell this if I knew exactly what cartridge this thing was chambered for, but I don't. It's a 45 caliber. Um, Rock Island lists it as 450 caliber. Uh, it could be the British 450 Adams. I think it's also possible that it was the French uh, 1873 11 millimeter ordnance cartridge. Just without doing something like, well, testing various cartridges or doing a chamber cast or something that I just don't have the equipment to do here at the auction house, it's impossible for me to say exactly which. But it certainly is a neat piece, isn't it? There is only one mark on this guy that survives, at least the finish is really quite worn here, and that is cast steel right there. That's it, no manufacturer's mark. Um, there are some proof marks here on the chambers. You can see one in the, the light reflection right there. This is a Belgian proofed gun, but all the other Belgian proof marks have worn away. So all we get are, you can see actually all six of the individual cylinder proof marks right there. Well, I wish I knew more about the background of this particular revolver so I could tell you, but I just don't. If you happen to know more about it, please, by all means, let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm, I think this is a pretty neat little revolver and I'd actually really like to know more about it. Uh, if you do or don't know about it but decide that you'd like to have it, well, of course, it is coming up for sale at Rock Island. And if you take a look at the description text, you'll find a link to their catalog page on it. You can see their pictures and description and place a bid online, over the phone, or here in person. Thanks for watching.